What's up, Dragon Nation? I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Stationers. Last episode, we were in creative to... I think we got the filtering system and the advanced furnace set up. In this episode, we need... Oh, man, there's a lot that we need to do. We still need to get these canisters set up so that way we can go ahead and start filling them. Because I'm almost completely out of fuel. I definitely need more fuel for uh, the welding torch. And propellant and oxygen is doing okay. I ha I've been using those sparingly, but we are going to need more at some point. Problem is, I just don't have the gases. Uh, but there are ways I can go ahead and get at least more CO2. Uh, not only that, but we need to go ahead and get ready to pressurize this base. Uh, I still have... Did I grab everything? No, I didn't grab everything. Is the lantern still over there? No, it's not. Where's all my food? Oh, yeah, it's in here. Okay. Uh, I still have a bit of food, so I don't need to worry about that too much. But eventually, I am going to have to make some more. So we need to go ahead and get this base closed off and get it pressurized. Uh, then we also need to worry about the temperature inside of the base so we don't kill the plants. There's a lot that we need to go over today. A lot. And I want to get it done by this episode. So this might be a pretty long episode. So let's go ahead and get it started. Alright, so I'm just double checking to make sure... I printed a bunch of stuff out that I'm going to need in this episode. Uh, I might not have everything, but we'll see. Oh no, you're the seeds. I don't need you. Uh, I thought I had... What did I use a console for? I thought I had another one. I must have used it for something. Oh, that's what I used it for right there. Alright, so I do need to make another console at some point. But anyways, like I said, we have a lot to go over. So I'm trying not to waste any time. Uh, I think we do have everything and I will explain as much as I can while we're doing things. Uh, try not to ramble too much. Because, yeah, like I said, we got a lot of stuff to cover. All right, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and take care of is probably the smallest thing we're going to be doing today. At some point, we need to close off this base. But if I grab my PDA right now, once we close off the base, inside of the base, we will trap in the gases that are in the atmosphere of Mars. So we have CO2, O2, nitrogen, and pollutant, I think is the X. So what we need to do is I don't want those, well, most of the gases, the CO2, the nitrogen, and the pollutant. I don't want, well, I guess nitrogen would be, anyways, I want to get rid of some of the bad gases. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to suck all those gases out and get rid of them before we pressurize the base, pretty much creating a vacuum in this base before we put the air into it. Now, the way we're going to do that is with an active vent. Right now, I could use, I could build an active vent to get CO2, uh, carbon dioxide, because the atmosphere of Mars is CO2. Uh, let's go ahead and grab, I'm going to need you. And I also need active vents. So, it's pretty simple. All we got to do is just, oh, I need my wrench. Add a pipe here. Now, I'm not going to keep it like this. Keep that in mind. Right there. Oh, and you know what else I'm going to need? Uh, something I forgot to build. I think I need steel in here. Oh, yeah, I'm making cables. Uh, walls. I forgot to make all the damn walls. No, not Q. W. Uh, kit wall. I think that takes... Yeah, I don't have any steel in there. Where's my steel? There it is. Uh, let's go ahead and get that out of there real quick. Uh, so in order to play stuff, I need... Oh, I forgot to set you back. See, what I was trying to do was I was trying to divide all of the ingots between the different printers. But I forgot to set this back so I could change the stacks. Oops. I gotta do it again at some, at some point because all this stuff got mixed up. Alright, I'm going to need 
One, two, three, four walls for right now. Actually, you know what? Let me just go ahead and make the one. <laughs> we only need that this second. All right. The reason I need a wall is because I cannot place a vent without a structure, something to snap to. So that's why we put down a wall. All right, let's grab active vent. Rotate it the correct way. Now, what I want to do is I want to suck the gases in. So what we have to do is we have to reverse this. So set outward, there we go. Uh, now I just need to connect that to power real quick. Are you on? Yeah, you are. It is nighttime, so my pump is on. And there we go. Now I can go ahead and turn that on. And since that pump is on, we should be getting carbon dioxide. There we go. Now, here's the problem. Later on, after I close off the base, I won't be able to gather CO2 with that active vent. So what I need to do is I need to put an active vent on the outside of the base. But here's the thing. Like I said, we need to create a vacuum inside of the base. That's why that vent is going to stay there. Not only that, I, I kind of I want to try to build a fire suppression system. Uh, what will happen is I guess I could do that with a sensor whenever it reads a fire. I don't know how that works. That's something I'll have to figure out. But whenever it reads a fire inside of this room, this is our mechanical closet. This is where all the gases are. So if there's going to be a fire, it's going to be in here. What it will do is it will close the door that's going to be coming to this room and then the vent will suck all the air out of this room, creating a vacuum, which should kill the fire. I thought about doing that, but I don't know how. But that's why I'm going to go ahead and leave that vent there in case I do decide to go ahead and do that. So what I need to do is I need another active vent. So that way we could get more carbon dioxide later on if we need it, which I am going to need it here pretty soon. All right, let's go ahead, rotate you this way. Grab a pipe. Wrench. And then don't forget to, oh, no, there we go. Don't forget to set that to inward. All right, I need to connect that to power. Don't want to forget that, I always forget. On this side. All right, so here's the other thing. Whenever I need CO2, I don't want to have to come out here and turn that vent on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up with a switch, which is actually pretty simple. Uh, there's my switch, logic switch. Now I got to change this to, I think it's a lever. Yep, there we go. So rotate you that way. Connect you up to cabling. Rotate. There we go. Alright, so now we have a lever. Anytime I need CO2, if we run out, I want to be able to just flip that switch and we get CO2. Flip the switch again and it turns it off. So we have to set that up with logic. I think all we need is a logic... Yeah, let's put it right here. Uh, logic writer, I do believe. Now I need to go ahead and get that connected to the cabling. Are we still making cable over there? Do I have two stacks yet? Oh no, it stopped because I connected the vent. That's right. Oh, I hate that. They need to change that in this game. Yeah, whenever you're trying to print something out and if you connect something like we just did, you notice how the lights go off or shut off. Uh, it also shuts off the printers and you have to go restart them again. So it should do it. No, it didn't do it. See how the lights went off? It did that to the printer too. So when you do that, you have to go back to the printer, turn it back on. Uh, they need to change that, man. They really do. I mean, maybe they did that on purpose, but I don't know. 
All right, now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and make sure that we name this so that way when we're doing other logic, we don't get it confused. I'm gonna call it CO2. All right, now I need to go ahead and do that with the vent as well so I know which one it is. Oh, can you go down? All right. The, see, I tried not to like smash my keys on my keyboard so it's not too loud in your guys' ear. But when I do that, the keys are a little heavy so they don't actually actuate. So sometimes when you hear keys in the background, it's because I have to hit them that hard. Anyways, so now that we got them named, let's go ahead and grab screwdriver. Yeah, I'll get some water and power here in a second. All right, so the input is going to come from that lever. So we're looking for... Jesus Christ, I got a lot of logic in here. Uh, lever. Yeah, that is a lot of freaking logic. Batch writer, more logic. And we're about to have more. We're not even close to halfway done with the logic yet. Jesus Christ. We need a search menu, man, so that way we just type stuff in. Logic. Oh. No, I have it connected. Why are you not? It sh I think it's... It's not... Sh oh, there it is. Alright, so the output is going to go to the act event CO2. Actually, let's hold down C, go the other way. Oops, there it was. All right, and it's going to tell that vent to turn on. There we go. Turn that on. So now, let's actually double check. Make sure the vent is off. There are no lights. Hit the lever. Now we should see some lights. And there we go. Active vent is on. And you can see the uh, particles actually going into the vent. And now if we hit that switch, there we go. Now I could, <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have thought of this, but I could go ahead and set that up with logic. So whenever inside of that canister, whenever it reaches below a certain pressure, it just automatically turns that vent on. Why did I have to think of that? Oh shit. I forgot to turn that off. Oh, that's okay. We're out of all the tiles anyways. So the pressure shouldn't have gotten too high. All right. So now that we have those vents set up, so at some point, yeah, I will go ahead and set up the logic so it does it automatically. But anyways, since now, actually, no, that'd be a bad. Sorry. I, I keep my brains working while I'm sitting here talking. I can't set that up automatically because if I do and that vent stays on, and this um, volume pump is turned off, the pressure inside that pipe is going to get too high. So what I have to do is I have to wait until that pump's on to turn this on. Because if I don't, yeah, it will explode. Anyways, so we need to now go to the next thing, and I need to clean those up before a storm, a storm comes. The next thing we need to worry about is filling up these canisters. Now this shouldn't take a whole lot of logic. There's only like two pieces of logic that we need to do. So I think it's, no, just one for right now. All right, so we have CO2, which is our propellant. That one is just free flowing. But what we need to do is we need a pump that will pump or a type of pump that will pump the gases into that canister but we also need to make sure it doesn't do too much gas and the way we do that uh is that it yep pressure regulator i also need to go ahead and get rid of hold on let me get rid of this real quick i need to make room for it oh too many going to put you back down here and grab you, just put you up here. Pressure regulator. 
All right, so for the CO2, oh, we already got it rotated the right way. So what I want to do is, I think the pressure regulators act as a pump as well. They're not as strong as a volume pump. They're actually pretty damn weak, so it will take a while to fill up this canister, but eventually it will. And once we have all the smart canisters, we don't need to worry about it that much. But what I need to do, if we hit F1, I need to go ahead and check out and see. Hydration critical. Oh, I need water. Uh, go ahead and find the smart canister. And we need to see how much pressure. Max pressure is 20,000. That's right. Uh, so what we need to do is grab our labeler real quick. We're going to turn the labeler on, go to this wheel, and so this only, uh, the regulators read in kilopascals. So the max was 20,000. We're going to go ahead and leave a buffer. So a little bit less and just say 18,000. 2,000 is not too much, but it just make sure that shit don't blow up. Then I need to get that connected to power. But first, I need to go ahead and drink. So this damn thing will shut the hell up. All right, so now that we got that one set up, what I need to do is go to the next one. Let me grab some food as well. Before she starts whining about that. Oh, and power too. I must have had a storm or something. Because that moved. It was up against the wall. No, that one didn't move. Why did this? I don't know. Alright, let's get over here. Alright, so once I have that connected to power, it will suck in CO2 into that canister. Once we go ahead and fill this canister up here, <laughs> a little bit more. So the next one that we have, this one is air. We don't need to worry about that right now. This one over here, which is white, is going to be our oxygen. Now that one's the same as the CO2, which is free flowing. So we'll do the same thing, just pressure regulator. And then we'll grab our labeler. Set that to 18,000. There we go. All right, and then I can go ahead and just turn those on. Those are going to stay on continuously. All right, now that I got that, that is our oxygen. We should be good on that. As long as we have oxygen in that canister, the pressure regulator should pull oxygen into the canister. Or at least I hope. Now, this one over here, the orange one, this one is fuel for the uh, welding torch. Now, later on, when I have the correct ingots, I can get myself an arc welder. But for right now, we're kind of stuck with gases. So we want to do the same thing with the pressure regulator, so that way we don't overfill that canister. But there's one other thing that we have to do with this. So 18... One, two, three. And there we go. Make sure that one is turned on. And then I'll get them connected to power on my own. Alright, so here's the issue. The fuel is actually a mi mixture of volatile and oxygen, which we set up in last episode. This mixture right here. Okay, I have it set up correctly. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to set up a logic system to turn that gas mixer on when the pressure in this pipe becomes too low. Because if there's no pressure, no gases in that pipe, it's not going to fill up that canister. So this is going to be like our volume pump that's over here. Whenever the pressure is too low, it will turn on. Now that one's going to be pretty simple, but it will take me a little while to set up. What I need to do, let's see. Yeah, we'll set it up here. I'm going to need a logic reader. Nope, that's a writer. Dumbass. All right, let's try that again. Logic reader. Uh, the way I've been setting it up down here is to try to save a little bit of room. I'll do it the same way. We need a logic, logic reader, logic writer. 
There we go. Alright, so here's the thing. I want to go ahead and mention this real quick. For this mixer right here, we could go ahead and use a Logic Writer. Because there's only one of them. But for our air mixture for the base, once to, we need to get it pressurized, there are two mixers. But here's the thing, you would think you could just go ahead and get a batch writer and control them both at the same time, but no, it doesn't work that way. I actually tested it out in my test server, and what it did was it tried to do all three mixers. I couldn't just pick two of them. So what we have to do is we have to do a logic writer for each individual mixer. Which isn't too hard, that's just one more logic that you need to add, it should be fine. Alright, so what we need now is we're going to be doing a logic compare, so we need a memory. We'll grab our math. And we need, let's rotate you that way. Logic compare. There we go. Alright, so what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and name everything real quick and also get it connected to power. It's going to take a minute. I don't want to waste your guys' time. So let me go ahead and do that. Alright, I think we're ready. I think I got everything connected. Everything is named. Yeah, so all I did was just name them fuel. Alright, so what we need to do is... <laughs> forgot one thing. I need a pipe analyzer so that way I can go ahead and read the pressure. So, shit, I can only put you right here. Uh, go ahead and turn that on. That's going to stay on. Put you back up there. Grab the cable real quick. Sorry, I thought I got everything, but apparently I didn't. Yeah, I'm a dumbass sometimes. I forget things. There we go. Alright, so right now the pressure is 981 kilopascal. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up for whenever the pipe, the pressure inside of the pipe is less than 7,000, uh, that mixer will turn on. So that way we always have pressure of 7,000 inside of the pipe. I think that should be alright. I mean, it, it works, I think. But anyways, so I need to name that. God damn it. Alright, so pipe analyzer control V fuel. There we go. Alright, just took me a couple seconds. Alright, so we need to read the information from pipe analyzer fuel. Uh pipe. Oops. There it is. Uh and then we're gonna read pressure. Oh shit. Oh, all my filters are almost out. That's alright. I still have 62% in that one, so I should be fine. Alright, we got that one on. Next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and set the memory. And I think I said, what, 7,000? So the logic only reads in kilopascals, so it's 7,000 kilopascals is 7 megapascals. Alright, now what we need to do is come to the logic compare. Right? Yeah. Alright, so we need to set it up so it will turn that on. So whenever the pressure in the pipe is less than whatever that memory says, which is 7000. So logic reader, which is going to read from the analyzer. Uh, logic reader... Fuel. There we go. And then whenever it's less than whatever is in the memory. Logic memory. Logic memory. Liquid gas fuel. Alright, then we'll come over to the logic writer. We'll read the information from the logic compare. That's the input. Memory logic compare fuel. That will go out to the gas mixer fuel. Let's actually hold down C so we can go the other way. Right, so there's a lot of shit in this base right now. Gas mixer fuel. There we go. 
And that's going to tell it to turn on. So it should turn on. There it is, because the pressure is lower than 7,000 kilopascals. And the reason is we're out of volatiles. <laughs> yeah, we have no volatile, so I'll have to get some more. All right, now that we have that set up, what we need to do is go... Oh, I forgot about... Let me get these connected real quick. Alright, so she was whining about canisters, so I went ahead and grabbed some. Alright, so I had another pipe analyzer. Why did I build another one? Oh, we still have to set up that one. Alright, so the next thing we need to get set up... I know you would think that we'd want to get the air set up, but I want to wait until we get this place closed off. Uh, what we need to do... Oh, okay. I know what we should do next. Uh, we need to go ahead and set up the heating and air conditioning. Oh, shit. Do I have... Did I make walls? I don't think I made walls. Did I not? I didn't. I could have sworn I made more walls. Oh, I did. That's right. I said, oh, I don't need them right now. So I stopped. I'm going to need three of these. So what we need to do is we need to set up the heating and the air conditioning real quick. Uh, I did do this before, eight months ago. It was the last video that I uploaded uh, before I stopped uh, eight months ago. So if you want a little bit more detailed information about how to set this up or how I set this up, uh, go ahead and look there. If I could get shit rotated the right way. All right. Let's face this way so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Up. Well, you're not supposed to go that way. Go that way then. Fine, be a punk. All right, there we go. So I need the wall in order to put up the heating and wall heaters and the wall coolers. All right, so this is wall cooler? Yep, wall coolers. Now, if you take a look at the wall cooler, not only is there a power connection, but, god damn it. Let's see, rotate. Uh, but there's also a pipe connection as well. So what I want to do... The reason for that is it works like a real-life air conditioner or cooler. What it does is it sucks in the outside air, and it goes through a cooling system, which is usually Freon, and then that Freon cools down the air, and then it's blown out cooler than it was before. These kind of work the same way, sort of. So what they do is they suck in cold air, and then they just fan out air, however cold it is. Uh, the cooler the gas you pump into it, the more efficient the cooler is. So what we need to do is figure out a system for cooling down the gases inside of a pipe, so that way we can get them down as low as possible. There's a few tricks to this. So what we're doing is kind of the same thing that we did with the advanced furnace. Uh, we want the gases to be pumped into pipes that are connected to radiators only during the night so they could cool down. And during the day, they'll pump right back into a storage container so that the pipes or the gases are never outside in a radiator when it's daylight and then they get warmer or uh, the pipes are inside this base, so room temperature will cool them up or warm them up. I need to slow down. I'm sitting here trying to think and talk at the same time. It doesn't work out that way. All right, so let me try this again. Uh, if we put the gases into regular pipes, these ones right here, what will happen is if those pipes are inside of the base, the room temperature will actually warm those gases up through the pipe. We don't want that. We want those gases to stay cool. So what we got to use is insulated pipe. So what I need to do is I need to set up a radiator system, which we're going to set up right here on that back wall or what will be the back wall. Now, I don't want this radiator system connecting to the wall coolers. It needs to be separate because the only thing going to the wall coolers is the cold air. So if I connect the wall coolers to the radiator system, then we got a problem. During the daylight, the gases can warm up. 
So what I got to do is I don't want to put it up against the wall. I want to put it about right here. Uh, I need to figure out how I'm going to do this. No, actually, you know what? I got it. I got it. Like I said, I've done this. I've done a video on this eight months ago. <laughs> so it's probably better if you look that up. But I haven't tried this since then, so it's going to take me a minute. All right, so one, two, three, four. No, I was right. It does. Might help if I actually put it against the wall. <laughs> nope, not there. God damn it. Right there. Yeah, I think that will work. All right, so let me go ahead and do this real quick. I have the pipes. Did I not make the radiators? I didn't make the radiators, but I do need to count them though. So one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, it looks like five. And then an elbow. What I'll do is I'll make three rows just like this. And then I'll go ahead and get the radiators on, try to save up a little bit of time. Then I'll just connect these like this. And like I said, I don't want the wall coolers to be connected to the radiator system. So that's why I'm leaving a gap like this. All right, so I'll go ahead and get those connected. I'll get the other rows done and I'll grab the radiators, put them right here, and then we'll continue on. All right, I think I'm good. Uh, so we have our radiator right there, which is about 15 radiators. Uh, then we have our coolers and heaters set up. I didn't connect it to power. I keep forgetting stuff. All right, let me connect this up real quick. So what I want to do, because we're about to add some more stuff here in a second, uh, not just a cooling system, but we also need to set up a buffer. Or what is it? No, scrubber is what it's called. Uh, at some point, if we're not wearing our suit, we're going to breathe in the air and it's gonna, we're going to exhale CO2. All right. So at some point, the CO2 inside of the base is going to get pretty high. So what we need to do is... And power. We need to set up a scrubber so that way we can go ahead and get rid of the extra CO2. Also, pollutants. Because we got a lot of stuff... Well, the way it should work. We have an advanced furnace. We have a uh, <laughs> ice crusher. And then we have these printers over here, which in real life, they would produce gases. Uh, whenever uh, metals or like plastics heat up, they create gases, which would go into the base. So not only CO2, but whatever gases that would produce. I don't know if that happens in the game. I guess that's one of the things we'll have to figure out. Uh, I'll check every once in a while if we have anything other than CO2, then I know. But yeah, we'll need to set that up as soon as we get the cooling system set up. All right, so here's what we need to do. Uh, when I'm storing the gases, as I was trying to explain earlier, but didn't do a very good job at it, uh, if we put the gases into this, these canisters, the regular canisters, the Mark 1s, uh, the temperature inside of this base is going to warm those gases up. But like I said, the cooler those gases are, the more efficient the wall coolers are. So we're going to... Where's my connector? There it is. We're going to be using a an insulated canister with an insulated connector. If I could get this rotated the right way. Come on. There you go. Put it right here in the corner. Try to save some room. Are you not filling? Are you filling up that fucking slow? Damn, that's been on the entire night. What's the temperature right now? So the temperature is negative 74, 75. So we haven't even reached middle of the night yet. But still, middle of the night, you would think the CO2 would fill up faster than that. Yeah, that shit is slow. Anyways. Uh, so now that we got our connector, we need to go ahead. 
Actually, I'll leave the canister off for right now because I'm going to need the broom. So what I need to do is we need to connect the connector to the wall coolers because the storage is only going to be connected there. We will connect it to the radiators too, but we'll uh, separate that with uh, volume pumps. And I'll, show, I'll explain that better any, here in a minute. So what we need to do is connect the connector to our wall coolers, the pipes there. But I don't want to do it on the floor because there's some other stuff that I have to do uh, in this little area right here, which we'll do here in a minute. So what I got to do is I got to go up to the ceiling and I can't do it back over here because I'm going to need room over here for volume pumps. And I'll show you why here in a second. Uh, please tell me I have more. Yes, I do. Uh, might have had almost had to take another break so I could get some more insulated pipe. All right. So this is going to go all the way over to the wall cooler. As soon as I grab my wrench and elbow. One. There you go. All right. Next thing I need to do is I need a way of getting those gases from the storage container, which is going to be right here, into the radiator. But I want to do it in a way so it's not permanently connected. I need that radiator to be empty, no gases in it when the when the uh, sun is up. Because if they are, the gases are in there when the sun is up. It'll warm the it'll warm the whole system up, and then we're fucked. I know I should have because it will be screwed. So what I need to do? Let me see if I could do this without. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set this up with volume pumps. Can I place? Ooh, I can. Uh, with volume pumps, but I need to do it in such a way so that the volume pump is going the correct way, but also can connect to power. So I need to hit C like a thousand times. All right, actually, you know what? Let's try this. There we go. All right, so I can't connect this. I can't connect pipes anywhere that a radiator is connected. So what I got to do is I got to come all the way to the end right here. All right, let's grab cable and a wire cutter. Not cable, my bad. Sorry, getting flustered because I keep screwing shit up, screwing shit up. All right, wrench. All right, so I can connect it here. Then down. Great, there we go. All right, so that volume pump is gonna be the pump that takes the gases from the storage, puts it in the radiator at night. Now what we need is we need a volume pump which will empty the radiators at night. So I need it to flow the same way, just like that. Actually, let's make sure we go ahead and turn up, oh, wrong way, turn up the volume 100%. There we go. All right, now I can go ahead and connect that. To our storage pipe. Whoops, I was going the right way. Hold on. Um, there it is. And then you up, up. There we go. All right, so as you can see, the volume, pu volume pumps are pointed the same way. This one is going to stay on continuously and it's going to get the gases into this pipe which goes to the wall coolers it will not be in the radiator it will only be in insulated pipes so it should keep the cold in there with the gases so when it's nighttime and it's below uh, zero degrees celsius that pump will turn on and it will pump the gases into the radiator allowing them to cool down until it gets daylight again and the pump will shut off. And this pump will pump those gases back into storage. It should work, but like I said, I can't connect pipes 
uh, where there are radiators. So I have to bring the pipes all the way over here. There it is. All right, so that right there is the hardware. <laughs> That's the start of it. We still have a lot more to do. Uh, we got to set up the logic for it here in a second. But first, I need to go ahead and get this connected up to power. We also need... Yes, I did. I was kind of worried that I didn't make a sensor. I'm going to need another wall, aren't I? Yeah, I can't place that. So what I need in order for the system to work, I need to be able to read the temperature on the outside of the base. So when the temperature is below zero, the gases can go into the radiator. And that's going to take a gas sensor. Motion gas. There we go. And I need to make sure that it's on the outside. But unfortunately, I can't place it. I did have walls. <laughs> there we go. Without this. All right. So I need to make sure that I put it in such a way. Actually, you need to be on the outside. No, you're going the wrong way. Hold on. I need you to go this way. Nope, other way. Rotate. Nope, rotate. <laughs> and then up. Nope, other way. I'm working on it, damn it. Actually, you need to go this way. <laughs> Needs to be on the outside, so I have to put this right here. And now, I can go ahead and put the sensor. I have to put the wall on the outside of the base. You could do two layers of walls on the outside and on the inside. Uh, so, well, you can see it right here. If you want to put stuff on the outside, you have to do the outside wall. If you want to put stuff in the inside, like I did those lights, you have to do an inside wall. So the sensor, I'm just going to place. Did I lie? I think I just, no, that's wrong way. Why are you not connecting? It should be connecting right to it. Well, I gotta figure that shit out. You know, you're supposed to go this way. I have no idea. Let me let me figure this out. But yeah, I'll go ahead and get that figured out. Get the uh, volume pumps connected to power, which I'll just bring them. I'll bring them somewhere. I think I'll just bring them straight back here. Yeah, I'll just bring them around and straight back and then down. No, I can't do that. I'll bring it to this corner right here. But yeah, let me go ahead and get this sensor in real quick. Alright, so what I went ahead and did was I went ahead and got our logic set up real quick. I did name everything, right? And everything is connected. Yep, so what I named everything was RAD. So we have that sensor, which is gas sensor RAD. The volume pump, which is volume pump rad and then of course our logic so what we want to do is we want to read the information from that gas sensor also i figured out <laughs> i i had no idea this was a thing the reason i couldn't place it the sensor was because i had the daylight sensor which you could only put on the outside it wouldn't let me put it on the inside or the out i don't know i have no idea it would let me put it on the bottom, but wouldn't let me put it on the top for some reason. But all I had to do was switch the sensor to a gas sensor and it let me place it. But anyways, so we need to read the information from the gas sensor. So hold down C. Gas sensor. Bad. D D E F. Gas sensor rad. There we go. We need to read the temperature. Oops, there it was. Turn that on. All right, so the temperature that we want to read is... Yeah, zero degrees Celsius. That's probably best. Yeah. Uh, zero degrees Celsius, which we have to use Kelvin for logic systems. We found out over here for that pump that zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. So we'll go ahead and set that up. So 273. And put that back. 
All right, now we need to go to the logic pair, and what I want to happen is, eh, there it is. Uh, whenever it turns dark and the temperature drops below zero degrees Celsius, uh, that volume pump will turn on. So we need to set it up for less than. So we need to read the information from the logic reader rad. Logic reader rad. And that is going to be less than the memory. So logic memory rad. Did I pass it? I think I passed it. Yeah, I passed it. My bad. There it is. All right, let's then turn that on. All right, with this logic writer, we need to read the information from that logic compare. So logic compare rad. Yep. Uh, that's going to go out to the volume pump rad. Oops. There it is. And it's going to tell it to turn on. So whenever the temperature drops below, ooh, maybe not. It turned on, right? Temperature is less than 273 Celsius. Did I? I must have messed something up. Logic compare red. And the logic compare is on. That goes out to the volume pump red. Which is that one. It should be turning on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright, so logic memory rad? Oh, that's that's why. I need the logic logic reader. There we go. Is less than the logic memory. I don't know why I did that. And there it goes. Now it's on. And then whenever the sun comes out and the temperature gets below, above zero degrees Celsius, that will turn off. All right, so the next step we need to take care of, which there's one thing I do have to make. I don't think I, I might have enough pipes. Why? Uh, do I not have any more insulated pipe? No, I do not. I need one insulated pipe. What we need to do, our storage container right here, we need to fill up with CO2. Which reminds me, this thing is still... Why are you not a 200... I don't know. Uh, it's going to take forever. I think it's because it had to fill up all the pipes. It, it's a lot of pipes, so it took a while. But what we need to do is we need to go ahead and fill up the container with CO2. Uh, we have CO2 up here or over here so we can connect it to that one but unfortunately we cannot connect a regular pipe to an insulated pipe corner what we got to do is we need one piece of insulated pipe and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a volume pump up there uh, just so that way we can pass uh, gases through I'll go ahead and do that on my own real quick it won't take me but a minute All right, so I waited until daylight came and it's almost dark again uh, Trying to get some things set up for the next step So this would probably be where I would leave the video off, but I want to get this done I want to get the scrubber done. I want to get the AC and heating done So that way we can go ahead and start with the base expansion. There's a few things that I want to do uh, What we're doing right now right this second uh, Let me actually say this first if you don't like really long episodes, I would say go ahead and leave the episode now and come back to it later when you feel like it. But if you don't mind watching, uh, this is going to be like a two hour episode. Oh, God. Anyways, it's going to be a lot of editing. But anyways, the, the part that we're doing now might not be necessary, but it's just something I want to do just to be on the safe side it's something you would actually do if you really were on mars you would set up a scrubber system to get rid of extra gases that you don't want 
what we're going to do is we're going to do pollutant and CO2. And what I need to do is I need to filter, filter, uh, I need to filter those gases out of the base atmosphere, the atmosphere inside the base once it's pressurized, and I need it to pump back out the clean air that we need in order to breathe. The way we're going to do that is, where are you? There you are. I already have the logic set up, so we're ready to go on that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a uh, filtration. Think, set it right there. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and grab our filters. So pollutant filter, CO2. But this is something I'm going to have to test out. Now, there is one other thing, carbon, uh, shit, nitrous oxide that we could filter out, but I seriously don't see us making nitrous oxide. Just out of things producing? I, I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to leave that off because what I want to do is I want to set up a logic system that will turn this on because we still need CO2 inside of the base for the plants. God, I got a bug on my screen. Uh, I still need CO2 inside of the base for the plants. The plants feed on the CO2. They also create oxygen, so the oxygen pressure might get too high in here at some point. Damn, I, that's another thing I had to think about. Anyways, what we need to do is the filtration has one input. It has a filtered output. This is the gases that we don't want inside of our base, the CO2 and the pollutant. So I can run that to this system right here which will get filtered out into storage or yeah the co2 will go into that storage and the pollutants will just go out into the atmosphere uh the unfiltered output will just go back to a passive vent and go back into the base that will be oxygen nitrogen and yeah just oxygen and nitrogen so what I need to do is I need to turn that on when the CO2, let's set it for 4%. Whenever the air inside of the base, base reaches, do I want to do, because we're doing 2% for our air mixture. Yeah, I think, I think 4%. Whenever we get to 4% CO2, that scrubber, well, the scrubber, we'll call it the scrubber. That scrubber will turn on and get rid of that extra CO2. So let's go ahead and name this because I need to be able to find it. We'll just name it scrub. Uh, the way we're going to do that is with a sensor, which means I need another wall. Oh, I got walls on me. We're good. All right. So we need pipes and wrench. All right, so the filtered gases, which are the CO2 and the pollutants, are going to go back into the filtration system. Uh, either get stored or get pushed out into the atmosphere of Mars. There we go. The input is going to go to a passive vent. I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. Probably from the bottom. Let's do it this way. Probably gonna need a wall for this. Yeah, I want it up in the corner, so that should be good. Let's see if I could, I don't think I could put the passive vent without a wall. Where am I? Okay, I did make some, cool. Oh, I can place them, we're good. That bug is back on my damn screen again. Get off there, you little shit. All right, why can you not, why can I not place you? Are the, cables in the way oh I do need support it just said I need support all right so you that way I need you out here so rotate like that there we go and now the passive end there we go all right so I don't need an active vent because the Filter, the uh, filtration does act as a pump. Now what I need to do, oh, it's about to get really tight in here. 
Uh, I need to do the same in this corner and connect it to the fil unfiltered connection. So we'll have it go downwards. Yeah, this is definitely about to get crowded. Uh, I need... Yeah, I still have another stack. Grab the wrench. Oh, we already have it. And what I need to do is I want to bring it along the wall so that way it doesn't look so damn cluttered. And I don't want to connect into this pipe. So what I think I'll do is we'll bring it up. Is that high enough? I don't think that's high enough. Do it this way. Hold on. I still need to be able to get out of this damn thing. All right, elbow. And we'll just bring it around the filtration. All right, there it is. It's connected. All right, so we need that to turn on. Oh, I need to connect the power too. Oh, let me out. That was a little claustrophobic. I get cable in there or do I have to go no I could get it then this one me in there there it is all right so that filtration system needs to turn on whenever the co2 is above four percent now I don't know if that's where I want to keep it I'll have to figure that one out so we need to be able to read the gas mixture inside of this base. So what I need is I need a sensor. There you are. So gas sensor, we'll put it. Yeah, I should be able to. Oh, can I run the cable down that way? I might have to just put it right there. Or I'll move those pipes, I'll decide. But yeah, let's go ahead and run it this way and I'll just connect it down to the bottom. God damn it, I hate when I do that. All right, grab you. Tell me I can still get a cable in there. There we go. All right, so that sensor, we need to go ahead and name. And I will just name it scrub. We also are going to use that sensor for our pressurize, pressurization of this base. But for right now, I'll just go ahead and call it scrub. All right, so what we need to do is we need to re read the information from that sensor and that will tell that guy when to turn on. I got to remember how to do this. Uh, it takes some math. All right, so the logic reader will read the gas sensor scrub. Oh, let's go the other way. Hold down C. Gas. Gas mixer, gas sensor, rad, scrub. There we go. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to read the ratio of CO2. Ratio volatile, pollutant, oxygen, nitrous oxide, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. There we go. Turn that on. Now here comes the one that I'm not exactly sure of. Whenever it reaches 4%, I can change this at any time. Right now we'll just go ahead and say 4. I'll have to look it up and see what's a better number. So what we need to do, if I remember correctly from math class, 4% is 0 0.04. Now, we can go ahead and double check that if we grab PDA. And the CO2 is at 95% right now. Yeah, the ratio is 95% CO2. So this sensor should read 95, no, it'd be this logic reader. 0.9496, yeah, so 95. So I think I'm right. It is 0.04 is 
If I'm wrong, somebody will let me know in the comments. <laughs> All right, so we need to read the information from the logic reader this time. Logic reader scrub. And whenever it's, whenever the percentage is greater than 4%, it will turn it on. So we need to go to greater than. And the number is logic memory scrub. Logic reader, oops. Logic memory scrub, turn that one on. All right, now we need to read the information from the logic compare scrub. Oops, logic compare scrub. That needs to go out to, shit, what are those called? Filtration, isn't it? Filtration scrub. Uh, hold down C, go the other way. Filtration. Scrub. There we go. And it will tell it to turn on. So right now, the uh, filtration or the CO2 and the... Uh, yeah, there it goes. So it's filtering out the CO2 right now. All right. So it is on right now because we are not uh, sealed off. It's reading 95% CO2, so that's why the filtration is on right now. You can see the light on the switch, yeah. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get this place closed off, but first, let's go ahead and turn this off. And if I could get my ass in here, turn that off. And then later on, once we get the uh, base closed off, we'll go ahead and turn that back on. All right, now the next step. <laughs> I need to go ahead and get this base completely closed off because we are about to pressurize this base. After we're done pressurizing, we need to set up these vents, which are connected to our air mixture, to go ahead and pressurize this base. I also need to go out and do a shit ton of mining and get a ton of ice. Uh, but first... Yeah, after that, we could go ahead and set up the heaters and the uh, coolers. Yeah, I think I think we're almost there. But yeah, I got a ton of walls to make. I'm going to close this entire thing off. I think, let me, let me check. I think these takes two plastic sheets. God damn, that's going to be a lot of silicon. Uh, how much silicon do I have? 495 I should have enough I should have plenty and I have 385 steel oh there's a little bit more steel uh, so I should be good I should have all the resources I need to go ahead and get this closed off I just need to make sure that I put a window there and a window here on both sides over here as well so yeah this is going to take me a minute let me get this whole place closed off and we'll be right back All right, so I think I have everything connect or everything printed, or at least I hope so. Probably not. I always forget something, but it was a lot of stuff to print out. So I've done an airlock before. Here's what we need to do. Now there's two different type of airlock controls. Where's that chip at? There it is. Uh, this one is the advanced airlock, and then there is a regular airlock. Uh, the regular airlock is the one you want to use when there is a vacuum outside of your base like on the moon uh, if you're on a planet which has atmosphere like here on Mars you want to use the advanced airlock oh for a second I thought I made two airlocks uh, you want to use the advanced airlock the reason is whenever you go outside let's say the door is open that one's closed whenever you want to go outside you step into the airlock you hit the button it will close the interior door. It will suck out all the air inside of this airlock. And then when there's a vacuum in here, it will pump exterior gases, the gases on the exterior, so that way it matches the exterior. That way you don't get a blowout because when the pressure is really high, that's what will happen. Uh, if you have a vacuum inside of this airlock and I think on, what is it, Vulcan? One of the planets, 
the pressure gets up to like 200 or something. I'm not sure. I haven't been on them yet. But the pressure gets really, really high. And if you open up a vacuum into a high-pressure atmosphere, you get what's called a blowout. Things explode. I don't think that happens in this game. All it will do is just pull you out of the airlock and probably kill you. But that's why you want to go ahead and use the advanced airlock so that way you can make sure that the outside pressure is set to the outside pressure and the inside pressure is set to the inside pressure and also have the same mixture of gases so before we can set up the air system we need to go ahead and get that airlock i almost completely forgot about the goddamn airlock but what we're going to need first of course we're going to need our doors i think i forgot to print out the resources to build these like I said, I always forget something. Uh, what is it to build this? Welding torch, plastic sheets. Yep, I'm out of plastic sheets. So I do have glass. I do have iron. Uh, iron frames. No, I don't need iron frames. I need... Oh, that's why. I'm about to expand the base, so I built more frames. Uh, I need... Do I still have iron sheets i have iron or i don't have iron in there all right so i need to pass the iron over so i can go ahead and close these off but anyways so we have our exterior door now we need our interior door i need to rotate you wait there we go and once i get those uh Actually, let me go ahead and get the plastic and everything and get those closed off real quick. All right, there we go. Now they're built. Uh, like I said, I always forget something. So what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and get those connected to power. Uh, they're not actually connected to power. I'm just going to get the cables in because I got to figure out where uh, to actually fit cables so I could hook this up to the power. All right, now that we got that, actually, let's run you. I need to run you this way. There we go. Because this is where I'm going to connect all the consoles and everything, too. Can you rotate the right way? Thank you. All right, so this power system is not only going to be connected to the airlock system, it's also going to be connected to lights. All right, so I'm going to need a sensor. I need the lights. Uh, gonna need the consoles. Now I printed out more consoles and I'll show you why here in a bit. Uh, we're gonna need the vents and the rest we could take care of here in a second. Did I? I did not make the iron plates. <laughs> God damn it. Anyways. All right, so the light here, I wanna go ahead and put right in the middle. Get a round light, point it that way. All right, now I also want to go ahead and get some lights on the outside. Oh shit, that's bright. I can't see. I think it's this light I like. Point it down. I think that's down. <laughs> and then one on this side. There we go. All right, now that I got the lights, what we're going to need is a sensor for the airlock. Go to put you right in the corner. We need gas sensor. There you go. All right. Then I need to go ahead and make some iron plates. All right. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and weld up frames a little bit. Because I need to be able to put up the uh, consoles. There we go. All right. So on this side, we need a vent best way to do this probably in that corner yeah that's probably best and then I need one on this side and I'll show you why I'm putting them on different sides here in a second then what we need is a console pointing down and I think that's it so we got the sensor the light uh, the vents oh you know what I just realized I gotta put up walls. <laughs> Please tell me I got more walls. 
No, I don't. All right, I need more walls. Please tell me I got the resources. Yes, I do. Uh, the problem is if I grind away the uh, frames, those vents will probably, I think they just fall. But if you put up a wall, that doesn't happen. All right, so I need to rotate this the correct way. God, I hate doing this. Rotate. No, the other way. Okay. There you go. And then this way. Or this side. No, right there. There we go. All right, now I can go ahead and grind. Please tell me I got power in my grinder. <laughs> At least. Can I get... Is it not a grinder? No, it's a wrench. Man, it must be getting late. Just to tell you how long it's taken me to get all this ready. Right now it's 4 o'clock in the morning. And I've been doing this since midnight. So, 4 hours, man, I've been working. Alright, so now that we got those. Uh, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and grab the advanced airlock chip. There we go. I also need glass. All right, let's put you in. Glass. All right, then we could go, we could turn that on, but I need to connect it up to power. Then what I need to do is I need to get everything named. So let's check out the power. The power is going to be an issue. Get in there. There you go. <laughs> Speak of the devil. All right, where's my suit? There we go. Uh, the reason power is going to be an issue, as you can see, there are some cables down here which are connected. Things are starting to get claustrophobic a little bit. I need to get rid of that furnace, uh, which is connected to these guys. I don't want to connect anything to this because if I did, uh, the cables would burn out. Because it would create a closed circuit. Is it closed or open? It, either way, uh, it would blow some wires, so I don't want to do that. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and first place these guys. So these are a couple of tanks, and I'm putting them on opposite sides because each tank is going to have its own storage. So on that side is going to be Mars exterior or Mars atmosphere. On this side is going to be storage for interior atmosphere. But I need to get over here. So I want to put this rotate. Uh, let's bring it back to right there so I have some room. There we go. Then I need to connect up the pipes, but let's go in and get the other one. Yeah, there is no room in here. I need I definitely need to clean this place up. It's way too claustrophobic. Like that. And then we need to go ahead and grab our pipes. Let me get a wrench. Then I'm gonna connect this storage up to that connector. Now, the last time I did this, I did it with passive vents on this wall right here facing inwards so that way we could get the base atmosphere. And then I had some passive vents on the outside. So that way I could get the Mars atmosphere. But it was really, really slow. It took so long to get the airlock to pressurize so I could get out of my base. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to test this out and see if it would be a little bit faster. Which I, I would think it would be. All right, so connector, I need to bring you this way. Then I, oh. Come here. So yeah, right now it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm getting kind of tired. Luckily, we're almost done. When you get tired, you start making idiotic mistakes that you usually wouldn't make. I mean, I make a shit ton of mistakes, but I'm making a lot more than I usually do. All right, now that we have that, we need to go ahead and put on the containers. Or what are these called? Portable gas tank. 
So that's the Mars exterior, or Mars atmosphere exterior. Mars atmosphere, and this is the base atmosphere. There we go. All right, so with the cables, let me go ahead and grab another stack. Like I said, I need to make sure I don't connect to those cables over there. So I'm gonna have to play around with it a little bit. Uh, and this one, I won't be able to put one in this far corner because the door is right there. So what I'll have to do is I'm gonna go along this wall and then I'll have to go in and then back along that wall. So yeah, let me get this all. I also have to name everything. So let me go ahead and get cables and everything connected, get everything named, and then we'll go ahead and set up this airlock. All right, so let's take a look real quick. We have our storage container, which goes to uh, this active vent, which is active vent airlock internal. We have that storage, which goes to this vent, that internal, yeah, INC internal. This one is airlock EXT for external. We have our sensor, which is airlock. Then we have our door, which is airlock external. And then this door is the airlock internal. I think that's everything. Are all these lights, the lights are connected? Yeah. So you see what I had to do with the cables? I had to come in and then down. Over here, I had to go out a little bit <laughs> and come down. Uh, it should work. Let's go ahead, grab our data disk, and it's time to get this set up. So let's go, let's get a little closer, go to search, look for airlock, not air, because I think some other stuff is named airlock. Confirm. All right, so here's the active vent airlock external. See how it says exterior right there? That's because we have to hit that one first. Make sure you hit that one first before you hit the other one, because if you don't, like where is, if I hit the active vent airlock internal and I turn that into an exterior one, it's gonna create all kinds of problems. So we have to do the external stuff first. So EXT exterior, that's that active vent. Then we have to do glass door external is exterior. Uh, the gas sensor. And then now you see how it turned to interior. Now we can just hit those. And the light over here on the switch stops blinking, which means we should be good. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and close those off. I think I'm done in there. So actually let's put the data disk before I lose it. In there, I need iron plate. Uh, please tell me I have enough gas. If not, I have a little bit of fuel over there. Okay, let's turn that off. I think there's a little bit of fuel in there. Yeah, there is. There we go. Alright, is this... Alright, that's closed. That one's closed because I'm hitting my head. I'm just double checking, making sure everything is closed. I think we're good. All right, so what we need to do is we need to fill the tank that was from the uh, Mars atmosphere. We need to go ahead and fill that. Uh, we don't have pressurization right now, so we'll just hit cancel. Uh oh, I got the wrong gases inside of that container. That's all right, I'll empty it. All right, so now it's open to the Mars atmosphere, which means inside of the airlock is Mars atmosphere. If we go ahead and cycle, It will pull the two kilopascals into that storage tank. Let's go ahead and cancel. There is one thing I forgot to do. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we need to grab the data disk. I need to set the external. There we go. Uh, the external pressure to two kilopascals because that's the inter external pressure on Mars. There we go. Because if you don't do that, it'll just keep running until it gets to, what was it set, 100? 
There we go. And that just makes it go faster. All right, now what I need to do is we need to go ahead and get our air system set up so we can get these vents on and uh, pressurize this base. But first, as you can see, we still have gases. Oh shit, battery's dead because I left the damn thing on. All right, I still have small batteries. I need to switch this out to large. There we go. All right, so as you can see, we still have gases inside of the base. We have CO2, O2, pollutant, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Where did we get hydrogen from? Huh, anyways, maybe there's hydrogen in the Mars atmosphere. So to get rid of those gases, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this vent on. That's going to suck out all the atmosphere inside of this base, creating a vacuum. So that way, we have no bad gases, gases we don't want, inside of this base when we try to pressurize. Let me take a look. We got a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of oxygen, and very little CO2. That's all right. We don't need a whole lot of CO2. Let's go ahead and get this set up real quick. All right. So this is where my extra consoles come in. And I still have four on me. Why did I make 10? Oh, there was something I was planning on later. Never mind. All right. So we're going to go ahead and put one count of uh, one console. Let me see. How am I going to do this? It actually rotates you so we can connect you to the power cord up there. Uh, put one here, one here, another one. Let's rotate you downward. Oh, that pipe's in the way. I'm going to have to move those pipes so I can also move the sensor. That's okay. We can go ahead and finish what we're doing. All right. So the reason I did that is because I have these gas display chips. And they're going to go into these extra ones. Let me go ahead and do this. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I want a readout of internal pressure and exterior pressure. So, internal base and exterior base. Grab the glass. There we go. So, the interior, which I'll set up right here, I'm going to have to move those... Uh, those pipes so that I could put another console there. Uh, the interior is going to read this sensor and the exterior is going to read the sensor up there. So that way I could get pressures and uh, pressures and temperature for the exterior and the interior. Uh, this one right here. Air control. This is what I'm looking for. This is an automated system for setting up pressure inside of your base. All right, so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and get everything connected to power. I'll move those pipes real quick, and then I need to uh, I need to go mining. I need to get a ton of ice. But yeah, let me go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'll be right back. All right, let's see what we got. There it is. No pressure, no gases. Atmosphere at room 19. There's room. All right. Anyways, so we no longer have any pressure inside of the base. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Make sure I hit the right one. There we go. All right. So I didn't get any ices. I didn't go mining. Uh, I did get some volatiles and the pressure is up to seven megapascals. So that canister should be. Yep. There it is. I still have to go get more volatile. As you can see, that container is almost empty. All right, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, pressurize this base. Now, we have oxygen, we have nitrogen, and we have CO2, which are going to be used to do that. Now, what I have to do is uh, it's going to take a ton of nitrogen because the nitrogen is... Hold on. 
Nitrogen is 78% of the atmosphere inside of the space. Oxygen is only 22. So I'm going to run out of ton of nitrogen and I'm probably going to run out of oxygen as well. So oxygen is oxide ice. Nitrogen is water ice. And then of course, volatile is volatile. But what we can do now is we can go ahead and get started with pressurizing the base. I hope. Hold on. Let me make sure I named. Okay. Air vent, air pressure, air vent, air pressure. And then we have the sensor scrub. And then of course we have these mixers. So air one and air two. Hopefully that works. Then what we got to do is we got to set up the heaters and the coolers. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right. So what I need to do after we set up the air, the problem is we're not going to have any pressure inside of these pipes. So we have to set up the logic for these two mixers. Now, remember what I said, all I need is a logic reader for the both of them, a logic memory for the both of them, a compare unit for the both of them, but I need two logic writers, one for each. Because the batch writer will read, it won't just be able to read just those two mixtures, it will read all three. I, I went into my test server, tried it out, and I couldn't get it to work with just the two. That's okay. I mean, it's only one logic writer. That's it. All right, so with the air, all we have to do is come up to this console where we had our air control. And what I'm looking for is this sensor, which is the sensor scrub. Uh, gas sensor scrub. And then I also need uh, active vent. What did I name that? Air pressure, right? Let's go ahead and do this. A I R P. Not reading them. I know why. <laughs> One more thing I forgot. All right. There we go. There's one and there's two. And I think you could do this with as many vents as you want, which means I could add more vents throughout the base once I expand. All right, so one, two, and I think that's it. All you need is a sensor. Yeah, all you need is a sensor and then the active vents. Oh, there is one thing we need to do. Mode pressure. All right, but the issue is we have no pressure in. Yeah, see, now the vents are on. They're trying to pressurize the base, but we have no pressure because of these guys. So what we need to do is what did I name these? Did I not name? I did not name those. All right. What I need to do is I need to be able to read the pressure inside of those pipes. So we need this guy, a uh, pipe analyzer. I need to connect that up to power. And then <laughs> I knew I forgot something. I always forget something. I need to go ahead and get everything named. So just that logic. Now you might see this other logic sitting here, which it looks like I forgot a cable. There we go. It, it's OCD, man. <laughs> it's, oh, it's irritating. But these are for the heating. See these, uh, these logic are for the cooling. These logic are for the heating. This one is for the air pressure. So let me go ahead, get these named real quick. And then I also need to get the pipe analyzer named. All right, now that we have that, what I need to do is grab my screwdriver. So what we need to do is we need to read the information from the pipe analyzer air pressure, and then we need it to tell it when to turn these two on. So logic reader, 
So we're reading from the pipe analyzer. Pipe analyzer <laughs> pressure, pipe heater, gas, fuel, air pressure. For that, we need to read pressure inside of the pipe. All right, turn that on. And the pressure is zero right now. All right, so we're good on that. Uh, then we need to go ahead and set the memory. And what we want to do is we want to turn those mixers off when the pressure is above 7,000, I think is what we were setting it for. So labeler and seven, one, two, three. All right, now that's set. Now we come to the compare unit. We need to compare the logic reader. So logic reader. Jesus Christ, how many logic readers do I have? There it is, air pressure. And whenever the pressure is less than the memory, so less than, and we need to read the logic memory. Logic, memory, grub, rad, liquid heater, liquid, heat, gas, fuel, cool, air pressure. All right, so whenever the pressure is less than 7,000, it'll turn those on. So we'll go to the first logic writer and the input will be the logic compare air pressure. <laughs> compare. Go on, man. Uh, logic compare. Jesus Christ. Air pressure. And now we'll talk to the first, uh, the first mixer, which I named gas mixer air one. So gas mixer. Hold down C, go the other way. Yes. Uh, went too far. Gas mixer, air one, and that will tell the turn on. And now since the pressure is actually zero, that mixer should have turned on. There it is. All right, now we can go ahead and get the other logic writer. So that will go from the logic compare air pressure. Liquid heat gas. Logic compare air pressure. That will talk to <laughs> gas mixer. Air two. Come on. Gas mixer air two and tell it to turn on. And there it goes. Now it's on. So we should be getting pressure inside of that pipe. And now the vents are, as you see, the particles are giving us some air pressure. So yeah, we're no longer a vacuum. All right. So we have... Yeah, this is the internal, this is the external. So internal temperature is negative 15 degrees. The pressure, one kilopascal. We need to get up to 100. Jesus Christ, it's gonna take me forever. Uh, this is the external temperature and pressure. So outside it's negative 75 degrees Celsius. The pressure is 1.8 kilopascals. Alrighty then. There is one thing I did forget to do. Uh, that tank in there, before I use the airlock, I need to empty that tank out. Maybe not. No, I think it, I think it emptied out when we tried to run the, when we tried to run the uh, airlock earlier, I think it actually emptied. All right, so here we go. Last step. This is something I'm gonna have to look up. 
what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it a nice comfortable temperature inside of this base not only for us but also for our plants so i'm gonna set it to for me it's 70 uh, yeah let's say 70 degrees fahrenheit i think it's like 21 22 celsius somewhere around there but yeah anyways but the logic system only reads in kelvin so i need to figure out yeah we're frosting because <laughs> it's really cold in here i need to go ahead and figure out what the kelvin is for 70 degrees celsius and i don't know if i discussed this i think i did it was quite some time ago uh we need to set up a buffer so we're going to do about 2.5 degrees either way no let's do three degrees either way so a buffer of six degrees so whatever is 67 so if it reaches 67 degrees the heater will turn on if it reaches 73 degrees the coolers will turn on but like i said i need to figure out what the kelvin is for those all right here we go since it is freezing inside of the space we'll go ahead and start with the uh heaters so what we need to do is we need to read the information from uh, that scrubber and we need to read the temperature or that scrubber that sensor so gas sensor scrub so we need to go to the heating logic which is this one right here uh, logic reader this is going to read the gas sensor scrub so let's hold down C so we go the other way yes if Gas sensor scrub. There we go. And that is going to read the temperature. I guess I didn't need another logic reader over here. Anyways, so we're trying to set up the heating. Like I said, we need a buffer. I'm going to try to keep the base at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So for the heating, whenever the temperature gets up to... Shit, I gotta look this up. Uh, no. 67... 67 degrees is 292 Kelvin. I'm trying to remember. My brain isn't working that well. So yeah, whenever it reaches below 67 degrees Fahrenheit inside of this base, uh, it's going to turn on the heaters. So we're going to go to logic memory. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set that up to 292 Kelvin. Let's do this. 0.6. Because it's like 292.5 something. Alright. I think that's right. Alright. Now let's go to the compare. So whenever the logic reader, which is coming from that sensor, which is reading the temperature inside the base. So logic reader, uh, what are you called? Standing on it, heat. So logic reader, heat, there we go. Uh, whenever the temperature is greater than Because if it's over, uh, no, less than, Jesus Christ. All right, whenever the temperature gets below 67 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to turn the heaters on. That's right, so it would be less than. Uh, the logic memory heat. I need to get some sleep at some point. Logic memory heat. There we go. So whenever the temperature inside of the base is less than 292.6 Kelvin, go ahead and turn that on. Uh, we need a batch rider because there's two wall heaters. Do I have those plugged? I think I have them plugged in. So we need to read from the logic compare heat.
there we go that's going to go out to the wall heaters there we go and that's going to tell them to turn on so since right now if we look down here we're at negative 11 degrees celsius those heaters should turn on there they go awesome all right now we can go ahead and set up the cooling but i need to double check the kelvin real quick all right so we didn't really need another logic reader but i'll just go ahead and do it so that way it's easy i don't get confused right now i'm tired and i probably end up getting confused so we need to do the same thing over here the gas sensor scrub read the information from that so gas mixer gas sensor scrub all right and we need to read the temperature way too far there we go all right we need to set the the amount to 73 degrees fahrenheit for us americans which is 200 295 point nine we're rounding up or down it's actually okay i didn't hit a nine over here 295.9 it's actually two two nine five point nine two so yeah we're rounding down but that should be okay it's not a big deal all right we'll go to the logic compare whenever the information from the logic reader cool fuel cool all right whenever the temperature we're cooling so if the temperature is greater than the memory logic memory cool Jesus Christ, I got too much shit. Gas, fuel, cool. All right, then we go to the batch rider because we have more than one cooler. All right, so we need the logic compare cool. Yeah, my eyes are starting to hurt now. <laughs> Oops, there it was. Uh, that's going to go out to the wall coolers and that's going to tell them to turn on unfortunately we can't test that right now because well it's not cold enough or it's not hot enough in here yet uh so right now it's at negative five degrees celsius so the heaters are working uh once we do get a little bit of heat in here uh once it gets up to temperature it's not going to take those heaters to heat anything up too much uh they actually work pretty well all right so what i need to do right now oh there is one thing hold on i forgot to do this we need to turn back on the scrubber it should not be on there shouldn't be that much co2 probably be a good idea to go ahead and put up some more consoles to read the ratio of gases that might actually be a good idea i just don't know where the fuck i would put it all right so right now we are not getting any more air we have a little bit of pressure but only like 10 kilopascals we are out of nothing it's just really taking that fucking long and i think they changed it uh, it used to be that would take like four canisters of nitrogen in order to fill up this base and we have not used that much but yeah at some point i'll have to get some more so let's go ahead fast forward a little bit <laughs> until this base is fully pressurized and then we'll walk around and see what else there is to do all right here we go so if we look you can see that there are some gases i don't want uh we have n2 which is nitrogen co2 is at two percent nitrogen is at 76 o2 is at 22 
we're kind of short on the nitrogen a little bit and pollutants there's a little bit of pollutants and a little bit of n2o which is uh nitrous oxide and i'm trying to figure out where the fuck that came from and it occurred to me uh i added some lights to the ceiling and i had a hard time getting to the cable which i just ran back here so i used my jetpack and i think that's where those gases come from uh but anyways if we take a look right now we're at 19.9 degrees celsius which is 68 degrees fahrenheit so i might turn that up just to keep it a little bit warmer because 67 is actually pretty chilly I don't know yet probably uh pressure we are maxed out on the pressure 100 kilopascals and this i did not have to fill up the oxygen i came really close though and i'm gaining more oh because it's warming up because the atmosphere inside the base is warmer so yeah yeah it's negative 4.6 and the gases are starting to warm up that's why the pressure is going up and if we take a look at the nitrogen this is what i have left after filling this thing four times i think but the reason i kept filling it was because i wanted to make sure that we got the appropriate pressure in this pipe which is seven megapascals and the mixers did shut off when they were supposed to so that's working the uh cooling system for our radiator for our ac seems to be working pretty well right now the temperature is negative 28 degrees celsius which is pretty good but we'll see if that actually gets a little bit colder uh there is a really big issue though <laughs> power i am sucking on power now granted the heaters were running for quite some time and they do draw a lot of power so i'm hoping that the sun comes up before i run out of power or i'm gonna have to add more solar panels which i need to do anyways because we still have to add on to this base uh there's a few things that i want to add to this base that are probably going to consume a lot of power i don't know what i'm going to do yet we'll have to figure that all out uh, but yeah, we have our pressure, we have our temperature, which is now 20 degrees Celsius, which I think is pretty comfortable. It's somewhere around the comfortable spot. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think we're good. Oh, there is one thing I do need to do. We need to open up that or uh, fill up that tank for the airlock, the other one. Now, the cool thing about this, the problem I was having before was whenever I was using the passive air vents for uh, to get the gases for the uh, airlock you would see a lot of the particles moving around the gas particles but now if we go ahead and go back in all right now it's going to fill up that tank and there we go so yeah, it's, it's not really quick, but it is a lot faster than it was before. And as you can see, no gas particles. Well, a few. Probably because of the heat. Maybe. I don't know. I might have to switch out uh, these iron frames for walls, so that way we don't lose heat. So that way we don't lose heat in those tanks. Because right now, I think they're considered to be in a vacuum, and that's going to cool them down. So I might put walls up instead of the frames. Uh, we have our canisters. They are full. I just need to get some more smart canisters so I can go ahead and uh, put those in where I need them. We have our heating and cooling. Uh, temperature is holding. Pressure is holding. All of our gas mixtures working. Filtration system working. Everything in this base is now automated. Well, not everything. The uh, advanced furnace is not automated. The uh, CO2 filler is not automated, but everything else is automated, which is awesome. 
But anyways, next episode, what we need to start talking about is hydroponics. We need to go ahead and start planting because we're going to need some food. We also have a microwave and some tables so we can go ahead and start cooking some food. And then, yeah, there's a few other little things that we need to start talking about. And then we need to start expanding. On my own, I'm going to add some more solar panels before my base dies. But yeah, we'll talk about all that in the next episode. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.